I'm still talking about data acquisition and in this video we are talking about the raw format the raw image format is defined as bit by bit copy of the raw data of a volume or a disk without any additions and by additions we mean things like metadata don't add and we don't delete anything from the data raw format images can be processed by most analyzing tools and of course they're open source and free some of the raw images extensions that you will be seeing are these that you are seeing on the screen the dot image dot dd dot dmg and dot raw i will show you three tools that are used to acquire images in the raw format and they are the dd the dcfldd and the dc3dd in order to do that I will use my Linux machine, my virtual machine on my computer here. Let me just power it on. I'll go with the Kali Linux. Log into it. and I will open a terminal first uh, let's see the DD command to get information about any of the commands if you do the manual you will get all the info of the command that you're gonna be dealing with in order to get switches that you can add to the command you can just go to the man pages any case close this I what I'm gonna be doing now is uh, to acquire a flash drive that I will be attaching to my computer now now all these commands the DD the DCFL DD and the D3 DC3 DD have the most basic form of them in which you just specify what is the input file and what is the output file and that will be enough so let's try that but before that I want to know on my Linux machine here what is this uh, USB drive how is it called on the Linux in order to be able to make an image of it so I'm gonna use a command called the F disk with a switch L and as you see here I have two drives on my computers right now the SDA with three partitions and the SDB with multiple partitions as well the SDB is my flash drive that I want to make an image of so remember this is the SDB the DD command stands for data dump which we are taking the data from one place from one file and dumping it to another file however I want you to be very careful here how you do the DD or the DCFL DD or the DC3 DD commands because the DD also is very well known and jokingly sometimes called not the data dump but the data destroyer command so you have to be careful what you're doing here and for that this is why I wanted to recognize or wanted to verify which one is my flash drive this is the SDB here and the SDA is my own hard drive on the computer that I'm running the commands on right now so I don't wanna do the opposite the most basic form of the DD command is to write the DD with the IF meaning input file and the input file now gonna be the flash drive so it's the dev slash sdb and then space and now I'm gonna say what is the output where it will be going and I will call it raw image one dot img so in this case this file that is called raw image one dot img is the image of the sdb drive the flash drive that i just attached to my computer now there are other additions that you can add to the dd as you probably gonna see from the man pages but let's go with the most simple one creating that image of the 
flash drive as I said before if you use this DD image in the wrong way you can very easily be writing on that flash drive which is the evidence in this case and this way destroying it so make sure always what is the input and what is the out I will start the imaging of course I need to run it as an admin because I'm not running as the root on this uh, Linux as you see now it's working notice that you're not seeing anything you just gave the uh, command there is no status what is going on how much has been done so far and this is one of the shortcomings of the DD command. I will wait here with you until the it's a very small flash drive and see how long it's gonna take to finish. It just finished just about a minute it took. So let's see now where is the image in uh, the computer. I'm gonna show the contents of the directory here and as you see it is here raw image one that image that's the image that we just created from the flash drive to see it in a graphical way you can go here to the home folder and here it is all right now we want to validate the image validate meaning that we got a complete image no changes of the contents of the drives in order to do that I will uh, hash the drive first and then I will hash the image itself and to see if the the hashes value the hash values match in order to do that in a Linux machine the command is MD5 sum and the name of the file or the drive in our case here remember it was SDB permission denied I need to run it as root so I'll repeat that again MD5 sum of the dev sdb and it is doing the hash right now it will take a little time that I would probably cut from the video okay here it is this is the hash value of the drive itself now I want to do the same thing for the image that I got for this image here in order to validate the image so instead of dev sdb I'm just gonna write the name of the image and that probably will take the same amount of time it was less than one minute but also here I will cut it from the video and here it is back and we have the new value of the image itself you notice if I compare this to this here they are identical both start with 8e 1e 17 and end with 050b and looking at the rest it's identical so we just validated that the image includes everything on the drive itself that it is a true copy true forensic copy of the drive and that's what we mean by validation now remember that the DD have multiple ways that you can use it one more use that I can add here is that we can instead of creating a file image of the drive we can copy also the drive from one drive to another drive in this case we just in the in the command that we are writing instead of writing a file we will write the second drive that we wanna copy to let me do that now I'm gonna attach another flash drive to my computer Okay, I just attached another drive. Let me see what is it called by running the fdisk L again. Remember that Kali here is opening the drives by itself. You need to make sure that that doesn't happen in real life situations. So I'm running the fdisk again. And here what I see we have a newer drive that's called the SDC and we have the older one SD4 which was the flash drive that we made the image from and the drive that the computer is running from the main hard drive which is the SDA 
So let's say now that instead of creating a file, an image file, I want to just copy and clone that flash drive. In those cases, you need to know the DD and the other commands, the DCFLDD and the DC3DD, will require a hard drive that is at least similar in size of the original one or bigger than it in order to be able to clone the drive from one drive to the other. So in this case, I'm going to run or at least write the command to clone the flash drive STB to the other flash drive that I call that is called SDC. So the command is DD and the input is dev SDB. The output is also dev SDC. I want you to remember one more thing also that using DD by default will copy the content of the drive until it looks it's a sector or a block that it cannot read from what we call a bad sector so here DD will stop and of course in this case the result gonna be that you don't have a full image of the drive so we have another addition to the command that we type to the basic command that we type which we call the, the conversion switch if I add that and I tell it not to stop if it faces bad sector then it will gonna continue and here is I'm gonna add it here the switch is called conv and equals no error sync so in this case this command will copy flash drive sdb to flash drive sdc all the content of F sdb will be copied even even if the uh, dd will counter a bad sector on that flash drive so i'm not gonna do it but you know how to do it because i don't want to delete the contents of the other flash drive that i don't know right now what is what is on it there are a lot of other uses for the dd command and also for the dcfldd and dc3dd commands everything that we did by the way with dd can be done the exact same way with dcfldd and dc3dd but another use of DD and other commands that is worth mentioning here that can be useful for a forensic investigator is the wipe using those commands. Sometimes you will need to wipe clean a drive if you need to copy fresh data from a case to it in order to uh, prevent any contamination with previously stored data there you need to wipe that drive. The way that we do it with DD is as the following. Same way that we started using the DD command, the input file in this case would be dev, and here we're gonna write zeros, and the output file would be your flash drive. If I uh, issue this command right now, if I hit enter, anything written on my flash drive will be overwritten with zeros so this is a good way to wipe a drive if I want to use it for something else also you can instead of zeros write random data to it if you want to securely wipe a drive now we come to the other two commands that I've been mentioning uh, the DCFLDD which was developed by the Department of Defense Computer Forensics Lab it is basically an enhancement to uh, the DD command and the other one is the DC3DD, which was developed by the DOD, uh, Department of Defense Cyber Crime Center, and is also uh, a different enhancement to the DD command. I will explain later uh, what are the differences between DC3DD and DCFLDD, but basically we can do with, the, with both of these the same things that we did with the DD is just now that we can have first a status what is going on when the imaging is being done the other thing is with that we can on the fly hash the files that we are uh, doing so hashing on the fly as the file is being transferred input about the status we also can split the image if we have a big drive hundreds of gigs we can split those and create a series of files of 10 gigs for example we also with those two can write to multiple outputs instead of one file i can write to multiple files so let's see now an example of what we can do with DCFLDD and I will use the same flash drive that I've been using before. So here it is, I just typed in the command for the DCFLDD and I'm saying what is the input file gonna be, which is the same one that we used before, the SDB. And then, and here's an addition to the DD that we are typing 
I, that I want to hash it and so the hash is equal MD5 and then a comma and SHA1 so I'm using two algorithms now to hash as the file is being transferred to the new file so I'm using hash and then I want a file a text file to tell me what was the hash for the MD5 and what was the hash for the SHA1 which is I made a mistake here let's correct it it, all, although it's just the name of a file but instead of 256 let's write one because this is what we're using as you see we have the status here 26 for now 36 we have the status in front of us not like the DD where we are not knowing what is going on so let's see what we created here I'm gonna go to my home folder here's the image itself I'm sorry this is the first one that we created with the DD here's the image itself that we created now with DCFLDD and I have two text files that will tell me what is the hash remember this is the MD5 hash and this is uh, the SHA1 hash let's try doing the same thing with DC3DD so here's the command again it's dc3dd the input file is the same one same flash drive the hash I'm using here is the md5 and what we added here is a little different is that we have a log file of what we are doing and I'm gonna call it dc3dd log and the output different name for that so we can differentiate between the different files it's usb dc3dd.dd so I'm gonna hit enter now provide my password and as you see here it's running now and probably I'll edit just to save some time and it's done let's see what we created again here I'm gonna go to the home folder and let's, let's see what we have so first the image itself this is the image the DC3DD the DD that was the first one we created with DD and this is what we created with DCFLDD so I have three images here let's see the file that we created the log file and we called it dc3dd log and let's see what does it contain it contains the the hash of course the most important and what was the command that we issued here it is what is the device size sector size if all those information are included here and the date and time remember this is the hash for the drive and if you remember this is the same number that we're getting in and again when we used DD when we used uh, I mean when we used MD5 sum with DD and when we used DCFLDD and now that we're using DC3 DD before I finish let me just say one more word about differences between DC3DD and DCFLDD because there are differences between them uh, DCFLDD is a fork of the famous DD while DC3DD is a patch of the current version of DD what does that mean fork and patch that means that DC3DD is updated immediately each time that is DD is updated while DCFLDD has its own schedule for release meaning if if any improvement are done to DD they're gonna be automatically into DC3DD while DCFLDD have to wait until they release until they release their own version again the newer version that's the most important difference between DCFLDD and DC3DD you probably gonna try both and whichever is 
uh, easier, more friendly to you, then this is the one that you're going to be using. This concludes this video about RAW format. Thank you for listening.